Hi, everyone. This is Robin Duncan with Ego's Playbook online course with the Answered Prayer Roadmap. And today our topic is cleaning house with EFT prayer tapping. And I call it cleaning house because from time to time, I think it's good to turn within and see what it is that we are still holding that is either bringing on additional stress or anxiety, worry, fear, anger, frustration, these kinds of things, because they can really stack up. And before you know it, you might feel like you're sick or you might have a back pain or, you know, it starts to really take over and then you can feel overwhelmed because it just gangs up on you, doesn't it? It's almost like along the way we see things, we hear things, we experience things, and I think they just stack up. I call it your emotional vault. It's kind of like the center of you is this emotional vault. And whenever you experience something that makes you feel like you're not okay or that things are not going to go well, it's almost like the door to that vault opens up and then whatever that situation is, it gets packed right there in the vault and you close the door and then you go on with your life, but you get heavier and more tired, more frustrated, more easily triggered. So if you're noticing any of those things, It usually means that your vault is filling up or it's full. And, you know, sometimes we're really frustrated even by what we see happen to other people. So it goes both ways. We'll try to pack in as much as we can today so that we can cover a lot of different areas. And as you come back to this particular coaching call, you can narrow in on different segments that were more specific to what you're going through. But today, as we look at things, we're not going to go into the details of the story itself. We're going to talk about the feelings and what's happening there. You might want to have yourself a little piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. I thought we might start out today with an overwhelming situation. You know, if you have one, that's probably the first one to go to. However, I think it's really helpful to pause. Take a deep, relaxing breath and ask God, what overwhelming situation should I think about? It might surprise you. It might be different than the one that you've been thinking about all week. I've had that happen to me many times. And our higher consciousness always knows best. Sometimes we think the problem is over here when actually the problem is over here. So let's just really take time for each round and go up in consciousness and say, what would you have me take a look at today? And then on your tablet, you might write down the word overwhelm and just put a number next to it based on the amount of charge that you feel about the situation that you are thinking about. And I'm going to try to fold in a lot of different words that might describe how it feels to be overwhelmed or what it might be about. And if I don't hit yours specifically, feel free to edit my words in your mind as we go along. So don't make my words mean so much. It's really about a direction of thought and to recognize this feeling of overwhelm and to turn it over in prayer and to choose again. So we've learned those steps of prayer are ask, to put it very simply, A-S-C, right? The A is to acknowledge the problem and ask God for help. The S is some form of surrender or turning the problem over. And then the C is to choose again. So as we go through the EFT tapping, it will be very spontaneous, but that's the basic process that I will be walking you through. So what I'd love for you to do right now is just take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And then let's take one more. And really feel the release going down and through your body. 
and we're going to go up in consciousness. We're going to tune in first to an overwhelming situation. If you don't have one for yourself, that's fine. I'm sure you can think of one that you've seen someone else go through. We can do surrogate tapping just as well. When you see someone go through an overwhelming situation, do you realize that you can be triggered just as much as if it was yourself going through it? So whether it is your own situation or someone else's, allow your higher consciousness, your teacher of peace, to guide you to a time that you either are feeling overwhelmed or did feel very overwhelmed. And just allow that to come to the surface of your mind. I'm not calling on you to re-experience the whole thing. It's just to get a hold of it. Because if it is stuffed away in your emotional vault, we want to get a hold of it today. And with God's great help, we're going to surrender it, turn it over, and let that inside shower take place. So again, let's pause. Let's think about just an overwhelming situation. And as you tune into it a little bit and bring forward just a few of those details and how it made you feel and perhaps how long it went on. And, you know, it can really be overwhelming to walk this life, can't it? I know I've been overwhelmed sometimes so much that I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. Sometimes I lost some of the best weight of my life was when I was entirely overwhelmed, but that's not a good way to lose weight, but it can have different effects. You can lose weight, gain weight, who knows, but being overwhelmed is not a good place to be. And today we're going to acknowledge just one of those times. And again, you can come back through, pick this up again for a different situation each and every time, and ultimately clear away all of those experiences of pain and fear. So let's pause right now, take another deep, relaxing breath. And again, edit my words as you need to. But let's go ahead and tap over the heart in a little circle here. And I'm going to move rather quickly because I'd like to cover a lot of different emotions. So today it's about overwhelm to begin. So feel free to allow yourself to feel deeply. Let's begin with this. There have been times I have been so overwhelmed. And it was really upsetting. It was really frustrating because no matter what I did or how hard I tried to make it better, I kept losing the battle and I ended up feeling powerless. Let's go now to the other side of the chest. And let's say, even though I was or am feeling overwhelmed and I'm tired of this feeling, I don't want to feel this way anymore. But I can't seem to stop it. I can't seem to get a hold of it. It seems to take over me. It seems to control my life. Let's go to the middle of the chest. There are so many components. that are making me feel overwhelmed. It's too much to carry. It's too much to work through. And then I feel defeated. Let's go to the top of the head, tapping in a little circle. And let's say I release all the pressure 
of what I am going through. I don't want to feel this way any longer. I am willing to have a different experience. I am willing to have a different outcome. Let's go to the eyebrow point, one finger on the inside of each eyebrow. And let's say, I am willing to forgive myself. for not knowing how to fix this, for not knowing how to change it. For not knowing how to move beyond it. Let's go to the side of the eyes and I'm going to jump forward to, I wholly forgive myself. If you need to use an ease in statement, you can. You can say, I'm willing to wholly forgive myself. But as soon as you can, as soon as it feels genuine, authentic, I want you to jump to, I wholly forgive myself. Let's go under the eye. I wholly forgive myself. I am doing the best I can. I am willing to turn this problem over and let it be solved by my higher consciousness. Let's go under the nose. I accept a better outcome. Let's go to the chin point. I accept a miraculous answer. Let's go to the middle of the chest, right on the thymus gland there. I accept an extraordinary outcome. I am willing to be helped with this. I am willing to accept help with this. I am determined to know that I can be helped with this. Let's go to the side of the hand right there at the base of the pinky finger. And let's say, dear God, I wholly give this to you, the entire situation. I want peace instead of overwhelm. I want your calm answer. in the place of my fear. Let's pause and take a deep, relaxing breath. And exhale. Very good. And on your tablet, if you might have started at a certain number, you might write down where you are now. Now, a lot of these might be nestled together. So we'll just see how we look at the end of the day. And if anybody is teetering there, hanging off a cliff about a certain emotion, I will certainly help you with that as we get towards the end. We'll do that specifically. But go ahead and write the number that you are now about this overwhelm. It doesn't mean you have to be at a zero. You might still be very high, but it might very well be linked to something else. And so we can cover it with these other rounds. So again, take another deep, relaxing breath. 
I am going to go through several negative emotions. So don't worry at the end, we're going to really sweep through with a nice whisk broom on the inside. And we're going to bring in all kinds of really positive, powerful language to take the place of those emotions. So again, let's pause. And I'd like you to think of a time that you were very angry. If you can't recall an angry time, maybe at least a very frustrating time that you recall. You can go back as far as you need to go. It could be second grade. It could be when you were a toddler and you still remember. A time when you were very angry, calling on your higher consciousness to guide you about when this time was, a time that is still in the vault, or a time that you experienced something else happening for someone and that made you angry. Again, you can come back time after time and apply this on different situations. If you'd like to write on your tablet just the words anger, frustration, and write down a number, a number of the height of the charge that you still feel today. And sometimes when we tap, that number might go up at first before it goes down. That's just because we're tuning into it and we're doing it together. This is a very healing, sacred time. And so when we really dive in to that vault, sometimes it can get supercharged for a moment before it starts to move on out. So don't be concerned if it goes up before it goes down, but I will not leave you hanging. So know that I won't. That's my promise to you. So take a moment and allow those details, just a few of a time that made you really angry. It might be now, it might be another time. It's not about time. It's about the anger. It's about the feeling that comes with that anger. And we know that we can't be angry and peaceful at the same time. And if we want a life of peace and happiness, then we have to look at the anger and be willing to turn over the emotion. And at no time are we condoning other people doing bad things. It just means that we are going to release from the anger. We're going to let God work out the situation with the other person. If it involves someone else, we're going to let our inner guide work with them so that you do not have to stay connected at this point in your anger. And then we can release that emotion so that you can open your mind and heart for a much happier situation for yourself. So please know we're not condoning wrongful actions. It's about letting yourself free from this anger. And God will take care of the rest. If somebody needs to learn a lesson or learn to do something differently, maybe they need really big lessons around this. There is a whole team dedicated to making sure that they get that. And you don't have to do that anymore. Let's go ahead and start over the heart, tapping in a little circle. And let's begin with, I'm just going to go as if you're angry now. You can apply the words like I was or there was a time, but I'm going to bring it in as if it's now. So let's say, I am willing to acknowledge that I am really angry about this. And this anger has been with me for a long time. I haven't been able to shake it completely. Maybe I've kept it on purpose. Maybe I feel safer that way. But I'm tired of this feeling. I am tired of being angry. I don't want to be an angry person. It feels awful. Let's go to the other side of the chest. And let's say there was a time. When something happened, 
Someone did something or said something. And it made me really angry. And I couldn't get them to stop. I have carried this anger long enough. It has suffocated me in my life. It has weighed heavy in my heart. It has cost me on many levels. But not anymore. Let's go to the middle of the chest and say, I am willing to release this anger. I am willing to keep everything I learned. To keep all the wisdom that I have gained. But I do not need this anger. It is not healthy for me to carry it. I am done with the anger. Let's go to the top of the head, tapping in a little circle. And let's say, I am not condoning what happened. This should never happen to anyone. But I'm tired of carrying this burden. I am ready to be free of it. And let God work out the rest. Let's pause just for a moment. Take a deep, relaxing breath. Everybody doing okay so far? The words helping you bring some things up? You okay? All right. Take another deep, relaxing breath. Remember, we're just tuning in to this well of anger that we are ready to move on from. Now let's go to the side of the hand and let's say, dear God, I have carried this anger a long time. Maybe it felt right. Maybe it felt good. I felt justified in my anger. But I am learning that when I'm angry, I cannot find happiness. I cannot have both at the same time. I'm ready for happiness. Let's go now to the top of the head. I am willing to release this anger. I will keep everything I learned. I am smarter than I was, but I will not carry this grievance. I will not burden myself any longer. Let's go to the eyebrow point. I release the pressure, the frustration. And all of the anger. I have carried it for too long. It has cost me too much. And I ask God. To take it from me. And heal it for me. Let's go to the side of the eye. 
I want peace instead of anger. I want happiness instead of bitterness. I want to laugh more frequently. I want to enjoy my life and have things to look forward to. I am done being angry. I've been angry long enough. Let's pause and take a deep, relaxing breath. We must realize that when we are angry, sometimes it's a form of protection because we don't want to see the same painful experience happen again. So forgive yourself for this. If you needed to carry the anger for a while or for a really long time, there was something important about it. And for a while, perhaps feeling angry felt better than not feeling angry. Let yourself have that. Don't make it wrong. But I know that after we carry it, it gets heavy. I remember going to a seminar once many years ago, probably 30 years ago, sitting somewhere in the middle of the crowd. And and we had this lovely teacher that could see auras around people. (laughs) And I thought that was super cool. And I couldn't see auras at the time. And so the teacher's sitting up there and he looks over at me. And I had just come out of a very challenging divorce. And I'm just sitting there, you know, being pleasant, hopefully. And he looks over at me folds his arms and he says, why are you so angry? I'll tell you what, I wanted to deck him right there. I felt singled out. I felt embarrassed. And I said, I'm not angry. (laughs) And he said, yes, you are. I was so, I was angry. Then I was angry, right? (laughs) I was so angry at him, but he could see it. I guess my red aura was showing. So after I got over the humiliation, the embarrassment, and my desire to like punch him in the face, (laughs) I went home that night and I decided I really needed to address this anger. If it was that obvious, perhaps I needed to take a look. And I actually bought a black bag with a baton And I just beat this bag with a baton. Can you imagine me beating this bag, crying, sobbing, beating this bag until the handle broke on one of them had to go buy a new baton. (laughs) So, One of the best things I ever bought for myself. And I'm not saying you need to do this, but I didn't really have these tools readily available at the time. And I needed a way to vent this anger so that it wouldn't crush me. And I ask you to do that too. Give it to God today. Let it no longer crush you. Let it no longer cost you or snuff out your life or your joy. Let's do one more round about this anger. Over the heart, let's just say, I'm willing to look at this remaining anger. It's hard to let it go because the things I experienced were absolutely wrong. And no one should go through this. I might have a concern that if I let go of my anger, I might be saying it's okay. I might be exposed to something like this happening again. These are thoughts we have sometimes. Let's go to the other side of the chest. I call upon God's help. Help me to give this to you. Promise me that I'm safe. 
promise me that I can give this to you and it will be followed only by blessings. Promise me that you will fill in this space where I have held this anger and you will make my life worth living. I expect your help and I will receive it. Let's go to the middle of the chest. I release this anger. If you want, you can put your hand in a little fist just gently, but that helps to tap right there in the middle with a little fist. Don't hurt yourself. I am willing to release all of the anger from every place in my body. Wherever I have stored it, wherever I have hidden it away, wherever I am using it for protection, I am willing to release it. I am willing to have peace instead of this. Let's pause and take a deep, relaxing breath. Exhale. Let's go to the top of the head and say this remaining anger. It might be stubborn. I've carried it a long time. I'm not sure I know how to let it go but I am willing. I am willing to let it go. Let's go to the eyebrow point. Dear God, take this anger from me, from wherever I have stored it in my body. Replace it with your love and your peace. I call on your presence to heal all of the anger right now. I am willing to have this miracle of healing I am worthy of healing. And I am worthy of happiness instead of anger. Let's pause and take a deep, relaxing breath. Exhale it out. I feel like we have to do one more round here. And of course, you might need to do several, but we're trying to get the big chunks down, right? So let's go to the side of the hand and let's say, if there was ever a time when I felt I gave my power away to another person and they took advantage They took advantage of me in one way or another. And then I got angry. And I might have carried that anger for a long time. I am taking my power back right now. And the power of God is within me. And the power of God joins with me. Let's go to the middle of the chest. You can again use the fist if you want. I reclaim my power. 
in truth, I cannot be altered by another person. No matter how painful it was or how disturbing it was or how awful it was, I am the holy child of God. I cannot be altered by anyone. I am eternal spirit. What God created within me cannot change. And I cannot lose my power. I have never lost my power. Let's pause and take a deep, relaxing breath. For some, the words may not need to be this intense, so please forgive me. For others, they're not intense enough, I understand, but maybe we're somewhere in the middle. But I know that feeling as if someone has just taken over at your expense. And I want you to know that even though that experience happened, you have never lost your power. You have never lost your right to a happy life. You have never lost the blessings that are yours to have forever, no matter how it looked. Take another deep, relaxing breath. Exhale. So let's go ahead now. Take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And we're tuning in with God's help on a situation that brought great sadness for you. It might have been a sense of loss or a dream that never materialized or something that just did not work out or the way that you wanted it to. It might be about a person or a situation, some sense of sadness. Take another deep breath. Be in touch with that sadness. You might write down a number for yourself about how deep that sadness goes. And let's go ahead and tap over the heart. Let's begin with, I acknowledge this sadness. It is so heavy. So encompassing. And there are days that I cannot get it off. Even though I feel this sadness, I am willing to know. I will get through it. I will move beyond it. Let's go to the other side of the chest. Even though I have this sadness, because there were things I wanted and it didn't work out that way. And I might still be wondering why. I might still be thinking I should have done something differently. Or I should have said something differently. Or I should have acted in a different way. Or they should have. Let's go to the middle of the chest. I am willing to acknowledge this deep sadness. And that it's okay to have these feelings. This has not been an easy life. It's okay to feel what I feel. It's okay to be upset with how things happened. It's okay to miss either the person or the situation that I miss. 
it's okay to want something better for myself and to see it happen. Let's go to the top of the head. I acknowledge this sadness and it can feel so heavy. And today I am willing to let that sadness release from my heart. I am willing to let the tears flow if they need to. I am willing to acknowledge my own heart's desires and what hasn't worked and what I couldn't change and what has been in the way of a reasonable, happy life. Let's go to the eyebrow point. I acknowledge this sadness, but I don't need to carry it anymore. I am willing to let it all come down, to empty out my heart of all of that heaviness. And whatever the thoughts are that are driving this sadness, I am willing to let those thoughts be healed. Let's go to the eye, uh, side of the eye. I am willing to have a life that I love. I am willing to have things work out for me. I am willing to no longer be stuck. I am willing to be surprised by my own forward movement. Let's go under the eye. If there is any place in my mind where I am still deciding against myself or my body or my future or my future happiness or another person, I am willing to lay the judgment down and make room for this healing. Let's pause and take a deep cleansing breath. Just making room. You're not in charge of the healing. You are not in charge of forming the happy life around you. You are here to make a new choice. That whatever choices were made in the past, maybe for very good reasons, but if we make a decision against ourselves or someone else, for whatever reason, that forms a grievance. And grievances block the light. If we block the light, we block happiness. We block abundance. We block health. We block companionship that we love. So today, let's let that heavy curtain come down. If you offer your permission, the Holy Spirit will take care of the healing and will accomplish the healing on your behalf. So let's just take a moment, each one of us with God, and offer to God that you would be willing to let go of all of these old feelings and not carry them anymore. And you would be willing to look at every one of those decisions that you made for whatever reason that formed those heavy emotions. And you are willing to see everything differently. Everything. We're going to now focus on this idea of guilt and shame. Something in your life you're not proud of. 
might have been something you did either intentionally or unintentionally. I've done both myself. Might have been something you said. It might have been someone that you feel that you failed or disappointed. You might feel that you weren't the best daughter or son or parent or friend. You might have felt as though you should have shown up for something and you just didn't want to or couldn't. Just take a moment and ask God, which time, if there is a time of guilt or shame, which time would you have me look at today? And now let's give it a number, a number of what that charge still is today. And now let's tap over the heart in a little circle here. And let's begin with, there was a time when I did or said something, and now I feel guilty. And I have carried this guilt a long time. I'm not proud of what happened. I wish I had been stronger at the time. I'm willing to consider that I did the best I could at that time. Let's go to the other side of the chest. I am willing to look at this event. And be willing to send love to myself. There were a lot of reasons for why this happened the way it did. And why I did not come from the highest place. I am willing to forgive myself. No matter how bad it was, I am willing to forgive myself. Let's go to the middle of the chest. I am learning that God already forgives me. And it could be that the other people involved don't think about it very much. It might just be me that thinks about it today. It might just be me that is still punishing myself. Let's go to the top of the head. As I choose to feel guilty, I end up inviting punishment into my life. This might look like delays or people that persecute or loss of income, or a sickness, health condition. I am tired of being punished. Let's go to the eyebrow point. I am willing to be blessed instead of punished. Even if I don't know how. Let's go to the side of the eye. Dear God, I come before you. And I ask for your complete forgiveness. 
for what happened before. You say you already forgive me. I am willing to accept your forgiveness. So I can now forgive myself. And complete the process. Let's go under the eye. I am willing to wholly forgive myself. No matter what the details were. No matter what labels I have put upon myself. I am ready to be done with it. I am ready to reclaim my innocence and reclaim my holiness that God gave me. Let's pause and take a deep breath. Exhale. I want you to realize that no matter what happened, how bad it was, how many times you think about it still, God does not judge you. I know this. And I had to forgive myself. And until I forgave myself, I lived a life of punishment. Nothing worked for me. I could have ordered shoes in the mail and they would have been in completely the wrong size. Punishment comes in many forms. It can be loss of income or delays. It can be people accusing you of something that you didn't do. It can be people distancing from you for no reason. It can be a life where whatever you want, it just doesn't happen. No more guilt. Guilt is an election. It doesn't mean we can just go out there and do things that we feel like doing at someone else's expense and not feel guilty. Why would we? That's not love. We are learning to come only from love. But if you're willing today, like I was some time ago, To lay down your guilt about whatever it is that you think you did wrong or said wrong or what you are not doing or what you're not saying or how you have failed someone or even failed yourself. Please stop for all of us. Do you realize when you lay down this guilt that you are blessing everyone here and beyond? As you reclaim your holiness, which you have never lost, by the way, what God gave you is yours forever. And there is nothing you could ever do, nothing you could ever say or not do or not say that can take away what God has given you. Would you be willing today to see through and beyond this guilt? And into your holiness. Doesn't mean you can see it. It's about you wanting to see it. And then God can show it to you. And the most beautiful thing happens is the people in your life start mirroring it back to you. And you start seeing a life around you that you love. And instead of it being punishing... It is glorious. So please consider today to be done with that guilt. Let's go right over the heart and say, I am willing. I am determined to be done with guilt. I can make good decisions with my inner guide. Because my inner guide is perfect. I don't need guilt to lead my life. 
or to make good choices. When I come from love, I will always make good choices. And I will always hear God's voice. Let's go to the other side of the chest. I wholly release this guilt. I'm ready to invite happiness. I'm ready for my body to fully heal. I am ready to have no good reasons to judge myself anymore. I am willing to see the best in myself, the best within others, even when they're not showing it to me. And then God will reveal it to me. It is an excellent choice. Let's pause and take a deep, relaxing breath. Exhale it out. Take another deep, relaxing breath. Exhale it out. Take a moment to notice what the charge level is. You can write that down. And now we're going to tune into a time of when you feel or have felt grief, grief and loss. They seem to go together. So this might be the loss of a loved one that you so deeply love and all of a sudden they were gone or perhaps they left slowly. But this feeling of grief can feel like a heavy curtain in your life. It might be a pet, might be a person. It might be a job that you loved and all of a sudden you were laid off. It's okay. Grief comes in many forms. But under that feeling of grief, there is a decision that you have lost something that cannot be replaced, that cannot be healed. And that leaves you with a feeling of powerlessness. So today, if you will, ask God, which part of my life should I focus on? Now or in the past, when I had a feeling of grief that might still be with me. You know, I had a dog once that saved Terry's life, my husband, because she was walking ahead of us on the trail and she ran under a bush as if she knew what she was doing. And she pulled out a rattlesnake and it was about six foot long and it bit her twice. She went down in minutes and we rushed her to the vet in the mountains. And the vet said, oh, I think I think I can save her. I think you got her quickly enough. She passed 20 minutes later, and I cried. I sobbed for three days, and I realized that I hadn't cried much for all of the loved ones I had lost before her. So she was the one that put the key in my gate and opened up that gate. Thank God for her. But I did feel better after that three days. And if you ever need to cry, please just stop and cry. Tap while you cry because the tears will go faster and the time of grieving will be shorter. But it might be a person, you know, I've lost many people. I'm sure you have too. And I'm not trying to make this longer than it needs to be, but I want you to really reach in and get a hold of that grief that you might still be carrying around because it will block the light from your life. And we don't want that for you. So let's just ask God right now, who am I grieving? What am I grieving? Don't judge it. Just let it come up. Write down a number for yourself. So you know whether you've cleared it or not at the end, it can always be something you come back and visit and let's go over the heart. 
starting there. And let's begin with this. Even though I have this deep feeling of grief, perhaps I have not been aware of it. Perhaps it has been weighing on me because it runs so deep and it hurts so much. And then I feel so sad. And then I can't seem to find the light. Dear God, I need help with this. Help me get through this. Let's go to the other side of the chest. Even though I have this grief, And it is deep in my heart. I call upon the power of God. The presence of God's love. To lift it from my heart. I call upon my creator. To breathe life back into my heart. Breathe peace back into my body to heal my heart so that I can have peace again. Let's go to the middle of the chest. I release all the feelings of loss, all the feelings of pain. All the feelings of blame and the feeling of shock. I never expected this kind of loss. And I need the power of God to move beyond it. And I am ready. Let's go on top of the head. I release all the feelings of grief. I release all the feelings of sadness. I think about what I have lost. And it is so hard to bear. And I feel like I can't get it back. And at times my heart aches. Let's go to the eyebrow point. Dear God, I give this to you. This burden of grief. Take it from me. Heal it from every place in my body. Replace it with your light. Heal my heart. Lift me up. Breathe life and happiness back into me. I need your help. Let's go to the side of the eye. It is your strength that will walk me through this. It is your clarity that will make me clear. It is your love that will lift me up and heal my heart for good. Let's go under the eye. I welcome this healing. I can't carry the grief any longer. It no longer serves me. I am willing to keep all the love, 
and every happy moment that we have shared. And I am letting go of all of the pain, the hurt, the loss, and the grief. Let's pause and take a deep breath. Exhale it out. Just pausing to say a little prayer. Dear God, I call upon your presence for each one here. As we come to you with our request that you would walk with us, that you would take these old pains and hurts and feelings of loss and grief and anger, take them from us, heal them for us. Help us to see everything differently. We call upon your vision that we would see a life that we love. We call upon your strength that we could carry on and we could welcome amazing, loving, wonderful people into our lives. We call upon your happy plan on our behalf. We are willing to wholly let you show us what that is and what it looks like. If there is any place in our mind where we are still holding on to these heavy feelings and emotions, we are willing to give them to you once and for all. Our bodies were not intended to carry these feelings. We want your peace instead of this pain. We want a life that we love, a one where we are eager to wake up and greet the day. We choose to have a life that is something so much greater than anything we have ever seen or dreamed of. And we are willing to receive this miracle of healing from you. And he says that once we ask him for this miracle, take a moment to receive the miracle. So we're going to do that right now. We're just going to take a moment and receive what we have asked for. Imagine God filling you up with light and every form, every trace of darkness or sorrow or grief or anger is dispelled by this light. Imagine yourself feeling lighter, happier, like an inside shower. If you need to take a an inside shower with a little shower wand in your hand. Be sure to wash away any remaining spots where you're carrying pain, hurt, frustration, anger, sadness, rage. Take a moment to use that shower wand in your mind of beautiful, golden, loving light and shower all down and through your body, especially your heart and especially your mind, washing it clean. Take another deep breath while you complete. Let's do one more round. Take a deep breath and ask God to bring to your mind whatever it is that is most troubling about what's happening in the world around you. And just bring that to your top of mind. You might write down a number for yourself to see where you're at with that. And let's just go over the heart and begin with, I am aware that I am seeing the world around me. And it is so deeply upsetting. It is so awful to see people hurting one another. 
to see the darkness that I have seen. To see people finding pleasure in taking advantage of others. It is unbearable. Let's go to the other side of the chest. It is unrelenting. It goes on and on. It seems to be everywhere I look. Everywhere I go. And I can't get away from it. And then I feel hopeless. Let's go to the middle of the chest. It's hard to imagine that this world could heal because it is such a mess. And then I'm tempted to worry for myself, for my family, for my children, for the children and the world that we are placing in their hands. The world we are leaving them with. Let's go to the top of the head. Dear God, I bring you all of my concerns. Sometimes it is so dark. It is so bleak. It is so evil. And it doesn't stop. It seems to get worse. I call on your power right now. Let's go to the eyebrow point. Take this from me. Heal all of it for me. I am learning. There is no order of difficulty in miracles. I am willing to consider that there is an answer to all of this because it is not the will of God. Let's go to the side of the eye. I am willing to welcome the solutions. I am willing to stand firm on the expectation that there will be a shift beyond anything I could ever conceive of because God is real. Love is real. And I'm going to be willing to count on it. Let's go under the eye. I might have my doubts. It might look impossible, but I am willing to know that with God, nothing is impossible. Let's go under the nose. I place my future in your hands. I wholly dedicate this world and the giant mess that it is to your very capable hands. Let's go on the chin point. I am willing to know with my whole heart that 
healing will be accomplished. Because God is love. And this is not his will. He says that if this world were real, he would be cruel, which he is not. Let's go to the middle of the chest. In order for this healing to take place, I must want the healing more than being right about the problems. And I do. I must invite the healer, which is not myself. I am doing that now. I must be willing to expect things to get better radically, significantly, in a way that blows my mind. And I don't need to know why. I am willing to have healing in the place of this mess. Let's go to the side of the hand. God did not create a shabby, evil world. God did not create lack. God did not create darkness. God did not create pain or abuse. This is not his will. And it is not mine. Let's go to the middle of the chest. Dear God, I invite you today. I invite your will your plan, and I have no decisions against you. With the power of God, everything will be healed. And I am willing to lay down my doubt and make room for you so that you can show me the happy life that you have for everyone that we have forgotten. I will let you. I do welcome you. And I thank you in advance for this healing. May it be swift, extraordinary, and remarkable. I expect it. Amen. Let's pause and take a breath. We really want to just get to a place of a willingness to see that no matter how big or complicated the problem is, how long it's been going on, these are decisions that we form against the problem or the people, and God can't get through that. If we decide it's an unhealable situation, then we'll have this experience as long until we change our mind. We're not the healer, but we are the ones to invite the healing without deciding against it. And so we just thank you, God, that you would decide about all of this on our behalf. Now we're going to do a nice positive tapping run. So let's begin now. As you can put your wand back on the shelf, you can pick it up anytime in your mind. And let's tap over the heart. 
And let's just say, I am willing to be free today. I am willing to be free of every layer of pain. I am willing to be free of every root and cause. of all of my anger, all of my sadness, all of my guilt, and all of my grief, and any other negative emotion. Let's go to the other side of the chest. Underneath these emotions, I had made decisions about myself or someone else. I am willing to clear my mind of those decisions and let God decide for me about all of it. I will step back and let him lead the way. Let's go to the middle of the chest. I choose to feel free. I choose to have peace. I choose to have a life that I love. Even if I don't know how. I choose to make room for my teacher of peace to show me every step of his perfect plan for my happiness. Let's go to the top of the head. I am willing to be happy. Even if I don't feel it yet. Even if it's not familiar. I am willing to be happy for no reason at all. Let's go to the eyebrow point. I am willing to know what joy feels like. I am willing to feel safe again. I am willing to feel powerful again. I am willing to have loving people all around me. Let's go to the side of the eye. I am willing to have healed relationships. Under the eye, I am willing to have a healthy body while I walk around in my own dream. I am willing to feel great and not even understand why. Let's go under the nose. I will make room. for extraordinary healing. I am willing to have a miracle. I am willing to have many miracles. I am willing to have daily miracles. Let's go to the chin point. If there is any place in my mind where I am still holding back, where I'm still judging myself or judging someone else. I am willing to stop. Let's go back over the heart. I am worthy of a happy life. 
I am worthy of being guided about everything. I am willing to know God's plan for my life. I am willing to not decide against it. Let's go to the middle of the chest. I am willing to know that God's plan for my life is perfect happiness. I will not decide against it. Let's go to the side of the hand. I place my future in the hands of God. Whatever I have been thinking, if it was against my future, I am willing to choose only the best for myself. Only the happiest outcomes. Only the most wonderful experiences. I am willing to be wowed by what happens in my life. Let's go back up over the heart. My future is safe. My inner guide is here. My guide has every answer. I will always know what to do. I will always know what to say. To ensure the highest and most peaceful outcome. Let's go to the middle of the chest. I am not alone. God walks with me wherever I go. I am loved. I am safe. I am assured of a happy life. I am grievance free. I carry no guilt. And I make all decisions with love. I can only bless and be blessed. Let's pause and take a deep, relaxing breath. Exhale it out one more time. Exhale it out. I'd like you to imagine a beautiful ball of light in your center right now and let that ball grow, expand until it's shining on all sides, out in every direction. And right there in the center of that ball of light, I want you to think of one of the happiest memories that you can think of, whatever it is, just something happy, real or imagined, something happy right there in the middle of that ball. And I want you to feel the fun, the happy part of that experience. I want you to feel what you love about it. And today we are claiming your right to a life that is filled with that feeling, filled with these blessings. Today, dear God, we call upon the healing of our mind. We call upon our perfect guide and teacher to fulfill his mission and his purpose. And you have taught us that his purpose and mission is to heal our mind and to remind us of our own perfection, that what you created within us can not be altered ever, cannot be changed, cannot be diminished, cannot be taken away, that what you created within us is whole, complete, worthy, safe, created by you, so you know 
what you created and that which you love. Today, we align with you. We have no decisions against you. We are willing to have an extraordinary life. We are willing for things to get a whole lot easier. We are willing to follow our inner guide that will always make sure that we hear, that we know, that we understand. And we will follow what is peaceful and compelling. And we will stay out of judgment as much as possible because this keeps our mind open. It keeps the light shining in our mind so that we are not blocked from anything good. May your blessings be exactly as they are. Today, we claim our true identity together. We are the Holy Son of God. We are free of all limits. We are eternal spirit. We are one with each other. We are one with you. It is your will that we are happy and blessed, safe and provided for. Abundance is the natural effect of following you and your guidance. We are free of all limits. Today, we claim our true identity along with our freedom, along with our divine inheritance and whomever we have been judging. Today, we send out love and we are willing to see them as you created them. Perfect, whole, happy, blessed. And we are choosing to know that in truth, they can only bless our lives. They cannot alter us and they never have. And we will know this as time goes on. Thank you, God. We receive this healing in your name, in the light and power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of Jesus Christ, we receive this blessing for all of us, not only for ourselves, but for each other. I receive this healing for you and with you. May God's will be done forever. Amen.